Dear learners, I am going to tell you about the science of paleontology. This is very interesting field and one of the latest branch of geology which is the backbone of the geological sciences. The term paleontology is derived from three words paleos, onto and logi. Paleos means ancient. Ancient pertains to sufficiently ancient. Onto pertains to life and logi is for study. So combined together it is the study of ancient life. Now any evidence of the ancient life one studied comes under the purview of paleontology. With the passage of time, many more new terms have entered into the field of paleontology. Depending on what kind of evidence of life we encounter in the rocks, we have one more term, paleobiology, which is also a branch of paleontology. Paleobiology deals with the way the ancient life used to live, the mode of living, the eating habit, the food, the reproduction and many more other aspects. Almost it is synonym with paleontology. Now paleontology includes the evidence of life whether animal or plant or anything else. As you know now the living world is not limited to animals and plants. Rather you have bacteria, you have algae and many more microorganisms which cannot be classified under animal or plants. Accordingly, the science of paleontology also expanded and all those evidences of life where life was microscopic in size, very small, tiny bacteria, microorganisms. All together, the science of micropaleontology emerged, which is also a branch of paleontology, now gained almost independent status. Besides micropaleontology, the evidence of plant life, say for example, the impression of leaves or petrified trees or any other evidence of the plant life was studied under paleobotany. So you can see that as the science of paleontology advanced, newer and newer forms of life were discovered the scientists started separating themselves into sub-branches like paleobotany, micropaleontology and also ichnology. Ichnology is a study of trace fossils. Trace fossils are those ancient remains of life which are indirect evidence of the life. That means, suppose you get footprints of a particular animal, then the footprint indicates the evidence of life, but it is not the animal itself. Likewise, the trails or tracks of the movement of animals are also preserved in the rocks. All such evidences of life are studied under ichnology which is science of trace fossils. Then palynology. You have heard about pollens and spores which are shed by the trees. In the ancient times, those pollens and spores which fell on the soft sediments and got buried and preserved, they are now recovered and are studied under the microscope 
and the study of the ancient remains of pollens and spores comes under the purview of paleontology. So now you know that the science of paleontology incorporates all sorts of evidence of ancient life. One interesting question emerges, how ancient is the ancient? That means, suppose that something dies and you discover the remains of the body, the bones after 100 years, 200 years, 500 years, will it be called a fossil? Well, the answer is no. The classical definition of a fossil is the fossil must be older than Holocene. Holocene is last epoch interval of the geological time scale which started roughly at 11,700 years ago. So the classical definition of fossil is that it should be sufficiently older and older than Holocene. Well, it doesn't mean that if something is 11,600 years old, you will not call it as a fossil because little leverage is there, but the fossil must be sufficiently old, ancient, roughly older than Holocene. And what are the things which are studied? Anything, any impression any record which gives us evidence of ancient life naturally preserved comes under the purview of paleontology. These are some of the pictures of the ancient life as preserved in the rocks. Rocks are sedimentary rocks. Fossils are preserved in the sedimentary rocks. The sediments, once they are deposited by the various geological agents like rivers, lakes, swamps, oceans, even winds, then the sediments are soft and these organisms, they live there and once they die, they get buried and quickly they are buried under the fresh layer of sediments and with gradual passage of time, the sediments become sedimentary rocks and the organisms become fossils. You can see some of the micro fossils which are in total totally recovered from the oceanic sediments. So that means fossils may not be only preserved in the rocks but the fossils can make the rocks and once you disintegrate the rock individual fossils may come out and show you their entire structure as they were living in the ancient times. Now, I will tell you about the modes of preservation of the fossils. That means how the fossils are preserved in the rocks. Few of them which are important, one is carbonization. You know that the living organisms are mostly made up of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, so once the organism is buried, then with passage of time, the gases, the hydrogen, the oxygen, nitrogen, they escape and what remains is a thin carbon film and that gives you an impression on the rock. Most plant leaves are preserved like that. This is known as carbonization. Then petrifaction. Petri means rock. Petrifaction means the fossil becomes the rock. That means the fossil once is preserved with passage of time, the silica or the carbonate solutions percolate in the sedimentary rocks and they remove the soft part and completely replace with the carbonate or siliceous cement and gradually it is hardened and you can get the entire fossil represented by either carbonate or 
silicious composition, very hard. This is called petrifaction. Then also some recrystallization can take place. That means a fossil, suppose it is made up of aragonite. Aragonite is calcium carbonate, but it is not very much stable. So an aragonite fossil, that means whose shell is made up of calcium carbonate, aragonite mineral, may be gradually replaced and recrystallized as calcite, which is more stable. So this recrystallization from aragonite to calcite will give the fossil more stability and its preservation is better and for large number of time. Then we have two other modes of preservation which are known as mold and cast. Mold and cast, whatever is the literal meaning of the term, is same in case of paleontology. They are in fact indirect evidences. If an animal is living on a soft sediment, it can make an impression of its body and once the sediment becomes solid, the animal is no more there that the cavity or the empty spaces may be filled up later by the rocks, by the sediments and that solid portion gives the shape of that particular fossil. So if it is not filled, it will be a mold. If it is filled and you get it, it becomes a cast. So many fossils are preserved in the way so that you get a cast of the original fossil which is not there. Only the external shape of the fossil has been filled up by the later sediments. And as I described earlier, we have indirect evidences of life known as trace fossils which indicate the activities of fossil. So the picture you see footprint of a dinosaur and the dinosaur must have walked over the soft sediment and this layer got preserved and ultimately solidified. So you get the footprint of the dinosaur preserved as the trace fossil. In some rare cases, you can also get the entire fossil with its soft part preserved. So sometimes the insects, they sit on the resin and resin very quickly covers their body and then they are preserved and ultimately with passage of time, their whole body inside the resin is intact and preserved, but it is very rare, but it's not very uncommon also. So such modes of preservations of fossil are studied under various conditions and it depends upon which type of rock you are visiting. You should be very careful, vigilant, and then you can get a lot of such fossils preserved. Now the beauty of science of paleontology is the verification of the Darwin's evolutionary theory. As you know, in ancient times, people didn't believe in evolution. It was Charles Darwin who proposed, thought, that the species which we see are evolved from a common ancestor and the species can change into other species with passage of time. Darwin's theory was published by Charles Darwin in his famous book on the origin of species in 1859 where he discussed about the fossil record, the natural selection, survival for the fittest. So the science of paleontology gives you lot of input about your own origin, your own ancestry. You have heard about the Australopithecus, the Homo erectus, the Java man, the Neanderthal man, which are our ancestors. Without fossil record, you would not have been able to visualize the evolution of ourselves. So to sum up, the science of paleontology is the science of studying ancient life or the evidence of life, which we call as fossil. Fossil must be older than Holocene. The fossil record can be preserved in various ways. That's what I discussed 
in the modes of preservation of fossils. Fossil record tells us about the organic evolution, the origin of various species, their adaptability, their interaction with the natural environment, their extinctions, the causes of their survival and our own evolution also. Thank you.